Hi, it's JC at Motorcycle Superstore and welcome to our Adventure Touring Helmet Shootout. Today we're going to be talking about helmets that are over $300. If you want to go less expensive than that, you have several choices, but we're going to compare similar and dissimilar features amongst these four items. We're talking about the Icon variant, the AGV AX8DS, the Showy Hornet DS, and a Rise XD4. So, all of these helmets are adventure touring or dual sport style helmets. I want you to know, however, they're great in other applications. I use this helmet all the time for commuting around town. If you have a visor, it helps a lot. I go to work with sun in my face, I go home with sun in my face. So this thing really pays dividends, all of them would rather. But, something to note as well, while we're pointing out these features, we ride in these helmets. These are actually my personal helmets. You're gonna see stickers and scratches and communication devices because we use them every day. These are actually a coworker of mine. However, I have owned both of these as well. So I'll give you a little bit of personal insight here. All right, let's start breaking these things down. Big money items, lots going on. Basically, let's talk about price first and foremost. The least expensive version of any of these helmets that you can get, the Icon's gonna run 350, 400 for the AGV, 510 for the Showy, and 600 for the Arai. So, Big difference in price, almost double the money. However, they're still not cheap no matter how you look at it. And one of the things to note is, if your most important or the most important thing to you is your budget, you can compare these based on that pricing scale. However, the next thing we need to consider is how much they weigh. The low end and the high end in terms of price are both the heaviest helmets on the table today. So 3.8 pounds for both of these options. The show is 3.4 pounds. The AGV is our winner in the weight category at 3.2. So fatigue, this is very easy to wear. I will note, in terms of the way these helmets come down on the back of the neck, this has a very high cutout. It allows you to move your neck, combine that with a light weight. This is extremely easy to wear for longer periods. The XD4, which is what I wear primarily, this thing comes down low, it's hard to lift your head, and it's one of the heaviest. Those are the things that I hate the most about it. All right, next category that we need to talk about is safety. All of these are very safe helmets, okay? So whatever you determine is your proper safety standard that you're looking for, that's up to you. However, these two are DOT and ECE 2205 rated. These two helmets over here, DOT and Snell. I'm not gonna pick a winner in terms of safety. I'll call that one a wash. You decide which one you wanna pick for your own needs. Okay, next up, venting options. This is very important. And venting goes right into the visors as well because these things really have a big effect on the airflow. So starting with the Icon, you can see just how big these Ram Air scoops are coming across. These have adjustable vents on the top on the forehead, also on the chin bar as well. However, not very easy to access some of those. Same thing with the AGV here. Venting options up top. You have two here on the forehead, one on the very top as well, and then your chin bar here. Now these are a little easier to grasp on the front, but none of these vents are very easy to work with your gloves on. So it's one thing I don't like about them. Also, something to note, these two helmets have exhaust vents, obviously, but they're non-adjustable. As we move to these two helmets, you're going to find adjustable vents on the intake and on the exhaust side. So with the Showy, one of the things I like about this third vent up top here, you've got two on the forehead and then this third, is that it's actually an attachment point for the visor, so it gives it a little bit more rigidity. However, this vent sucks. It works really well, but this is hard, it's clunky. When you get some dust in there, it practically locks up. So. The chin bar is pretty easy to access, however, I like that. Also, here's those adjustable exhaust vents in the back. Very small tabs, they get very sticky with dust as well, so I'd really like to see some improvements in terms of the venting, but the performance is very good. In terms of the Arai, lots of adjustment here as well. So, we'll see those vents up top. See them on the chin bar. This is a multi-position chin bar, so it's gonna do different things based on what position it's in. Also, you're going to find the brow vents on the shield. This is different than anything else. None of these have shield vents. Uh, this is one of my favorite features on this helmet, and the exhaust vents here are all adjustable, so you can close them in a couple different fashions, so it's really adjustable. One of the things I don't like about the venting on this helmet, all the cowlings. They look great, but they're just these plastic pieces held on with double-sided tape. Some of mine are already starting to come off. They're designed to break away in a crash, but it's one of the things about Arise that I kind of don't like. Anyways, in terms of venting, I'm going to give the nod to this one because it has the most vents, the most options, and the most adjustability. Okay. Next up on our lineup here, we go into the interior. All of these things have removable and washable interiors. They're all moisture wicking fabrics. However, as we move through some of the key things to remember, uh, ultimately these pads come out the easiest. They're the easiest to replace on the Arai. However, it's also the most comfortable. This has a very nice interior, extremely soft, very comfortable to wear. Also, you can actually apply speakers into these very easily. As far as the showy goes, 
adaptable, no problem. Get your speaker comm system in there. However, it's a pretty rough material. If you have stubble on your face, which I often do when I ride, this thing will tear you up. It's one of the reasons I don't wear it as much as I used to. AGV has a great interior, very cushy, very soft. It breaks down very fast, however. The helmet I had, one day it just decided the pads were done, so I had to replace them. It was really weird the way it broke down, but more importantly, it does not have ear cutouts. So I have floppy ears. When you stick your head in this thing, you really have to tuck those ears inside. It's going to affect you also if you want to run speakers. So that's one of the main downfalls for the AGV. Interior on the Icon, nothing we can really complain about here. It's comfortable. It makes moisture. It works just like the others. Okay, so in terms of the interior, Arai wins again. Now, maintenance. We have to live with these. We're washing the interiors. We're also washing the exteriors. One of the things that really sucks about the Arai is the maintenance factor. All these cracks and crevices, it's hard to deal with. Um, but you're going to find that on all of these. The AGV is actually the easiest to work on in terms of removing the shield. It only takes one screw on each side. It pops straight off. Very simple. Because it doesn't have anything going on around the edges, you can actually get it off very simply. Compare that to, say, the Icon. Try pulling the shield off of this. You have to tuck it up underneath this cowling piece. Uh, the same thing with this model as well and over here. That actually makes it a little more difficult. However, one thing to note on maintenance, all of these have extra shields that you can get. You can be either get a clear, a tinted, whatever, so you can actually uh, tune those to your specific needs. In terms of the maintenance, AGV wins that category. Now, next up, we're going to talk about some of the aesthetics. This is going to be personal preference. You'll probably uh, disagree with me on this one. However, let's just go with it this way. Orion and Shoei, nice looking lids. They're a little vanilla. They're very straightforward, traditional style helmets. The Icon, this thing is the wild and crazy. A little bit too much going on for this uh, in, for a lot of people. AGV, this thing is wild, it's modern, it's got sharp edges, but at the same time it's streamlined. I'm going to give the nod to this one in terms of aesthetics and looks. It's really a cool looking helmet, it's got that dirt bike look uh, to a certain extent, so really a great option there. Not too much, not too little, so I really like the looks of the AGV. Now, the last category, because we're talking about dual sport helmets, we're talking about the visors and the shields, and these combinations are critical. Now. Let's start over here with the Icon. This thing has a visor system that's very complicated. It uses these ram air vents. It's also pretty breakable. I traveled around with this helmet a lot and I broke these vents all the time. So if you're rough on your helmets, if you drop them on the ground or whatever, this one is going to break the most often in terms of the visor. Also, the shield works fine, uh, but it has the most distortion on it. So at those lower edges, you're going to get the most distortion because it sort of has that rounded bug-eyed look. Fantastic look if that's your thing. However, a little distortion out of that. Same thing with the AGV. And also, something to note on the AGV, see how angular this is? It's not like a smooth arc. These angles all catch light, and when you're running it in sort of this half-up position, if you want to get a little airflow to your face, it's right in your vision, and it's very distracting. So it's almost impossible to ride with it in that half position. That's a downside for some people. I don't really ride with that that way, so if you don't care, then don't worry about it. The Shoei has great optical clarity, nice tab on it. One of the things I don't like, there's really no detent. There's no way to pop it down and lock it, so I always feel like it's a little bit loose down here on the seal. Uh, that's one of the downsides to this. Like we mentioned, it does have a third mounting point up top, so the visor is actually pretty dang good. It's, it's pretty solid. It's not adjustable, however, so you can't pull it down or push it up as you need to. That's one of the things I like about the Arai. I push this down like a total dork when the sun's low. I run it up high when I don't need it. It's really easy to get just a little bit of adjustment out of it. This one's not going to adjust either. The AGV does have some give, but not as much. So this is really your best option in terms of moving that visor around. Also, similar optical clarity and great vision from this, but definitely the best clarity out of these two. But you hear it pop in. It's got a nice detent down low. It's got the brow vents at the top. I'm going to go ahead and give the nod to the Arai again on this one in terms of the visor and the shield combination. So that gives you a general overview. So if you're to tally up all the scores, I guess you could call the AGV and Arai joint winners. I'm not going to do that today, however, because what's most important to you is what matters. If you want to worry about price or safety or looks or venting or whatever it is, you decide which one's going to win. However, you have a little bit better idea now of how these things stack up side by side. Thanks for watching. Leave me some comments. You can tell me I'm an idiot. Or you can tell me that I'm exactly uh, right on the nail here, whatever it might be. Also, leave us some comments for other viewers telling how these things work and some of the nuances that you've discovered over time. Thanks again. Don't forget, subscribe on YouTube for more product videos, and we'll see you next time at Motorcycle Superstore.